In part one of my moped series, I spoke with Seth Bedwell about the moped aesthetic. In part two of my moped series, I spoke with Tim Pearson and Brett Walker about what you need to know if you buy a vintage moped. In part three of my moped series, we're going to talk about performance tuning. If it has two wheels and a motor, it can be raised. 50cc racing is popular in Britain. It may become popular here too if gas keeps topping $4 a gallon. People in the AMA only dream of getting 70 miles to the gallon on a racetrack. So once again, we're going to head over to Seattle Mopeds, this time to talk with Michael and Ryan. Both of these guys have some radically fast bikes. We're going to talk about performance tuning, about the pipe, about jetting, about port tuning. And once and for all, we're going to solve the mystery of the variator. There's got to be racing clubs around. What do people do to modify their bikes to make them faster? Well, the basic things that people do to modify anything is one, raise the compression ratio. These things have a pretty tame compression ratio. Um, it gets allows for more torque. How do you accomplish that? Uh, there are aftermarket parts. They have heads that have smaller squish bands. Um, a lot of people, like for example with this bike, I've raised the compression just a little bit by actually milling the head surface down. Other things that people do, um, these did not come with reed valves. Uh, they some mopeds have reed valve stock and it is better for high RPM performance. Uh, the basic again is an exhaust pipe and that uh, you know changes the RPM ratio where the pipe kicks on usually higher RPM. So basically a stock moped is going to come uh, mm. tuned basically for low and mid-range power. If you're yes. going to race then you, you need to basically get the power band up so right. specifically you're going to change, you're going to do maybe some port tuning. Mm -hmm. can, can you tune ahead? You can tune that as he was talking about earlier, you can tune the squish band by uh, milling it down and then recessing the squish band farther into the head or reducing the size of the squish band and also the squish band usually has a diameter, you go like 40 or 50 percent where it's close to the piston and then the actual squish band itself which is a cupped area inside the head. Um, you can either move that in or reduce the size of it to uh, drop the amount of area that there is inside of the cylinder to raise the compression ratio. Pretty much anything racing will be uh, extremely high compression ratio the comp raised compression ratio will want more fuel. The pipe also, uh, they're tuned to draw more fuel through the two-stroke and pull it out so you get more of a complete transfer where you, otherwise with a stock pipe you usually end up with a little bit of exhaust still in um, the cylinder when it comes up and closes that exhaust port. Um, in this case it scavenges the whole cylinder out with a pipe drawing more fuel. You're explaining how the expansion chamber works? Yes, yeah, that's how okay, the expansion so that's the chamber. That's the pipe, which is in this case, they're both, both these bikes have pipes on them, so to so try to help get more fuel through the cylinder. Uh, do you run standard octane fuel? Uh, I just run, I just go to the pump and go pick up uh, just a high octane, I think. Yeah, the 92 with a little bit of octane booster in it. Right. And we're also mixing the, the mixture is, instead of, uh, on these it's supposed to be 50 to one, I'm doing this at 40. Right. So it's still a little bit richer coming out. Yeah, I run pretty much the same as Ryan does, about 40 to 44 to one. Mm -hmm. It, it takes, takes a little bit more, time more fine tuning, there. blowing things up, milling stuff down, figuring out what works, what doesn't work. Uh, in this case, the carburetor has one jet, so you have to jet for low end, top end, mid range, everything all at once. Right. But there are also other carburetors that have three jets. You can change the needles, more yeah. racing applications. Yeah, my uh, my my carburetor is a uh, one of those. It takes uh, three jets plus the needle. Um, the uh, there's one jet for starting which is just the choke jet and then there's another one that's a low end jet and then there's a high end jet and then the needle itself modifies your mid range it is the tuning of that carburetor just trial and error basically select a jet yeah, go out trial and error. Uh, you, generally you actually uh, just go back and pull your plug out um, over and over again run it 
over and over again for different ranges to get the right tuning until you get pretty much consistent um, color all the way through your RPM range. In, in my case, this is, a, this is a stock. It's a one size bigger than a stock carburetor on a Pook. Um, it is the exact same thing, just one millimeter bigger. And when most people try and tune or even just get it right adjusting for climate changes, like around here there's ups and downs and even... Right. Is it that sensitive actually? The uh, this one actually is. But that's just, it's been the messed nature with of a this lot. Beast. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there are, like, in the summer, it does get, you know, sometimes really hot, and you do have to upjet, downjet based on your um, temperature. And the way to get it consistent is you run one jet, run it down, let the bike warm up, go around full throttle, come back, kill the bike, take out the spark plug, and look at the color of the burn on the plug. And based off of that, you go up or down. So you're looking for a coffee color. Yeah, you're looking and for a coffee color. And if it's really, color. if it's dark or it's white, right, uh, then that's to, not right. Yeah, correct. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Um, some of us, I'm sure, Mike also does this. I run mine pretty rich, just so there's no, there's a little bit more room for air, because there's so much done to this. It, yeah, the uh, aftermarket cylinders are generally fairly sensitive because they just run a lot tighter tolerances. You run higher compression ratio. They all kind of push you more and more towards seizing the motor. So you always have to control your fuel delivery in a much more detailed manner. So that can be done in several ways. One, through the carburation. The second would be in your mixture ratio. Isn't that correct? Yeah, somewhat. Uh, generally, you still always need to um, jet the motor to get the right amount of fuel through it because uh, if you raise the mixture up, then that actually lowers the quantity of fuel that's coming into the motor, right. which means you have to change the jetting again. All right. So the, And then when, uh, when you've <laughs> made these modifications, what's the result? <laughs> um, I'll much faster climbing up hills, uh, generally a little bit more top speed. Um, yeah, just all around better performance. A uh, lot more maintenance. Yeah, a lot right. more maintenance, especially on bikes that are designed for uh, um, not much horsepower from the factory. So. All right, so what's standard horsepower? Three? Something uh, like that? Two. One two? And a half or two. Oh, yeah. you're that low. And yeah. so after you do your modifications, what does it become? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't <laughs> actually strapped it down and figured anything out. Um, but you're going from 30 miles an hour to what at that point? Um, on the extremes, people can be going 60 miles an hour, um, super extremes. Generally, when there's aftermarket parts, maybe 45, 50, right. um, consistent. And I'm guessing that if you're going to do that, then you're going to need to change the brakes and you may need to change the suspension. So what do you do with for that? Um, actually, there's not too many options for the brakes other than completely changing it to disc brakes which right. some of the newer mopeds have so there's a lot of modification done or that needs to be done to do that um, but as far as the front ends this is a is a stiffer front end it's a stronger wider um, the stock front ends are really weak and can fold these can actually still fold but it's better than nothing but if, you, if you're in a race, actually, then you're probably flat out, and it just right. doesn't matter. Right. Yeah, I mean, in that case, uh, they're both stiffened as well. As you can see, Ryan's added that in, and I added a stiffening bar to my bike as well to help the, how rigid the frame is to help keep it from flexing while it's cornering and uh, just handling a little bit better. Right, I've noticed that the uh, Peugeot has actually bolted, the frame is, this upper section is bolted in here, so does this, does this frame bar actually provide a lot of extra stability? Yes, it does. Uh, it's, like I said, because uh, the actual frame itself is only this one piece of tubing, essentially, that goes from the gas tank to the back of the bike. Um, Peugeot's are a little bit strange and they don't use a traditional swing arm. They're a little bit more kind of like a scooter where the um, length of the swing arm is much longer. So it takes a little bit of load off this, but there's still enough flex in the frame that having a uh, frame brace helps pretty dramatically and making the bike just feel a lot more stable.